Good afternoon. Uh, it's really a pleasure for me to stand today here at the Free Collection to present this research on the last research I've done on enamel conservation. And also, it's interesting because it's of general interest. And I'm at the end of the preservation and treatment part. And after, it will be the history and technology. And this project talks about everything, all these topics. Uh, so my contribution today is what you have before your eyes, the cover of a booklet that I recently finished and printed. This is the object, and the title is this one. It's a concise bibliograph concise bibliography on the technology, deterioration, and conservation of enamels on metal. It was originally home printed in 2001, and distributed to a limited number of colleagues. Uh, this list of references from the origin has grown from 171 references to 327 today. It is presented in a book form with the aim to become a daily reference for conservators, historians, and scientists. Uh, it will also be offered to the professional community through the web page of the ICOM CC Glass and Ceramics and the ICOM CC Metal Groups. This bibliography at the origin was mainly addressed to object conservators like me who, need, uh, who were looking for information about enamels on metal. It contains published sources and excludes classical literature on the conservation of glass and metal because it is considered already known by the reader. The emphasis is in conservation, as you can see here with the, the most numerous ref references are in the conservation chapter. But the compilation approaches also the technology and the deterioration of these composite objects. Uh, the references are organized chronologically in four major themes or subjects. Here you can see them listed in this order in the book. I prefer the chronological order because I think it gives a very uh, rapid historical idea of the evolution of the conservation of enamels. All these references have been gathered in the course of the last decade as a natural consequence of my professional activity as a conservator. The libraries I used to collect all this information have been four. The first one was the library of the IFROA program in Paris, which is called today Institut National du Patrimoine. The RACO library, the second one, it's also chronological, uh, in a, chronological order in Corning, New York, and, sorry, just three of them. And for this new edition, uh, I completed the research work at the library of the International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, which is more famous under the name of ICROM Library, and you can see me here sneaky, sneaking around, and it's a very uh, useful library because you can go yourself in the in the shelf, well, and look for the things. You just have to look on the, on the books. So I don't want to go in details on how this bibliography was made, but I just would like to show you a page of the database I designed to collect and organize all the information gathered. Uh, it's a FileMaker document, and it's divided in several fields. You can see here the reference field, and after that you can, I, I created a field for types, or topics, very general ones, and here uh, the materials that you can, that are mentioned in the papers, and this one is more um, personal, like keywords or abstracts I do from every um, paper, every, every book I, I, I found. And it's interesting because you can do, um, you can combine research with different fields. So for example, you will put a selected, this one here, it's the one selected, and technology, and all the papers related to technology and enamels will, be, will show up. So now I will show you uh, some highlights of this bibliography. 
as I said at the beginning, it's divided in four chapters, and the first one is a compilation of recipes, manuals, and treatises on enamel on metal. I have gathered 22 references from the 9th century manuals to the recent book by the Catalan master in the art of enameling, Andreu Vilasis. Here I am showing you the covers of two important treatises that have made uh, it to our days. The first one is, you know him, uh, you know it, I imagine, the Mon Theoph Theophilus monk from the 12th century, and here he describes the champ levé technique, and the other one is another technique, the Bastai technique, found in uh, Benvenuto Cellini from the 16th century. They are just two examples of things you can find in this chapter. And two other examples from the 19th century. During this uh, century, there was a, a general rediscovery of painted enamel technique. And one very important person was, was Alfred Meyer, who was the scientist working at the um, manufacture of Sèvres. Uh, and he made experiences and wrote a book on his found, what he found. And here it's just an exercise he made, a very small enamel to illustrate the, his book. And Claudius Poplin is also a very, very famous person because he wrote a book on the technique of Renaissance or Les Émopins. And he was a friend, he was working with Alfred Meyer. So they're interesting, two interesting books for the technology, for the historical technology. The second chapter on technology as now 115 references from 1872 to today. It comprises information about the different enameling techniques, analysis, composition, but also problems of authentication. I have chosen to show you uh, three papers, three issues of glass on metal, which is um, a more a technical uh, magazine, but it's, uh, there are papers from Woodrow Carpenter, who is an engineer and he's the manufacturer of enamels here in the United States, the last one. And he wrote at the beginning of this, uh, of when he created this magazine, several papers on the technology of enamels and they're very useful papers to understand the physical and chemical properties of enamel. At least I found them very interesting when I began my research. Uh, the chapter on defects and deteriorations is a compilation of 28 articles for those interested in the degradation phenomenon affecting glass in relation with metal, and they are published between 1931 until 2008. I, I, I have put here illustration of two um, enamels, two kind of enamels of uh, on iron. This one is very small from a French enameler, but these one are bigger, it's architecture also. And it's, it's interesting because I think in the industri industrial literature, you can find interesting vocabulary to describe degradation, defects of, of enamels. I found it interesting. But of course you can find papers also, scientific papers describing degradation, deterioration of enamels in the ICOM CC triennial meetings. It's another source of information. Okay, now conservation, uh, which is the big part. There are 162 references, have you seen at the beginning? Uh, they're on case studies, conservation and restoration practices going back to 1866, which is the book of, oh, sorry, Chioku, and Beatrice already told you about it before. So references that mention old repairs have also been taken in account. And here in, in the book of Tioku, uh, you can find a lot of recipes to repair enamels. And here on the other side, you have the paper, uh, paper of, of Ross that was published in the Fog Art Museum's magazine, Technical Studies, in 1980. 30, uh, 34, and I think it can be considered as the first paper of modern conservation of enamels on metal, because in this paper, Ross makes a, a kind of inventory, a list of all restoration techniques he, he observed on objects, so it's, it's a very interesting paper. 
Here, I love this page because when I did the, in the, the bibliography in 2001, this one didn't exist, but I knew of this one. And so it was the treatments that Michaels, uh, who was working at the Walters Art Gallery, uh, he made um, some, he treated, he studied and treated the unstable enamel of the collection in the 1960s. And in 2003, Terry Drayman Wasser, who's in this room, did an assessment of these treatments. So you have, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 years, or a lot of time passed by, and she was able to look at these treatments and give an advice, or at least this assessment. So I think it's very important. This is a history of conservation for us, at least for our field, for enamels. And now just a few, uh, I would like to show you some pearls. Maybe they don't look as pearls for you like that, but I have found some of these papers during this last decade, and the two first ones um, are ancient reference before 2001, but I missed them in the first edition, and I think they give you a good insight of what was the situation of enamel conservation 40 years ago. First, you have here a paper by Marie-Madeleine Gauthier that was published in this conference in 1968, where it's like a retranscription of her um, conference, and she explains all the old repairs and restorations she, crossed, she, she, she has discovered during her work uh, on enamels and goldsmith works, and it's a very vivid way to, to describe the things. It's a nice paper. And here you have something else. It's an issue published in 1978 at the occasion of an international enamel fair organized in Limoges during a few years, where you can find several papers related to the history of enamel. And one is by Colette Di Matteo, who's an inspector of um, monumental, no, historical monuments in France. And her paper is dedicated to, con to the conservation, you see here the title in French is The Problems of the Conservation of Enamels, and, and it's specific problem, problematic. And everything is already here, uh, but you see she's talking about the degradation, specific degradation, the cleaning, uh, preventive conservation, but this information was almost more lost because it wasn't published, well, it's not published in a very uh, logical uh, place for us. We wouldn't go to look for this kind of, of paper on conservation in, some, in a magazine more for craftsmanship, but you can find information there also on conservation. And here, uh, I can say that last decade has been quite rich in publications uh, on enamel and metal conservation. And here you can see one of these uh, publications of high quality, the postprints of a meeting held in Germany, um, in Braunschweig, if I don't know, yeah. mistaken, okay, in 2002, and dedicated just to Limoges painted enamels. And this is one of the papers published in these, uh, these postprints from Rainer Richter. And it's a very interesting one because it's um, a technique of authentication of Renaissance enamel and identification of 19th century enamels by using uh, UV light. So you should read it. It's very recommendable. And to, to finish for this, this list, uh, of course, since the, the group has been created in 2006, there was an increase uh, in papers, even if they are abstracts. We didn't publish abstracts uh, the first meeting in 2006, but in Rome you can see the cover of the abstract that were distributed to the group as the ones you have today. So these are also um, on the web page of the ceramic, glass and ceramics and metal groups of the ICOM CC, and you can download them from this page. So they're uh, available very easily to, to, to the person who wants some more information uh, on the conservation of enamels. And just to 
I have three uh, diapositives uh, on conclusions, just to concentrate what I found doing this, this work of uh, recollecting all the references. Uh, you've seen Beatrice showing objects. I worked on the sources, and it's very interesting to, 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 to find, to, uh, to say there is something that we can take from all these references together. And these are the two first, uh, oops, sorry, conclusion I can, I, can, I can say, that during the 20th century, our profession uh, lived a profound evolution, leaving the status of craftsmanship to that of properly discipline with straight links with humanities and science. And this evolution is reflected in the bibliography, in the chronological bibliography. That's why it's chronological. The study of literature has shown that enamels on metal have been repaired for a long time. Traditionally, the craftsmen themselves carried out repair for functional or aesthetical purposes. And here you have the um, King John Cup, which is a good example of this practice. It has been repaired many times since the 17th century, and every repair is recorded on the object. And you've seen this image before, Beatrice shown it to you before, and it's, uh, it's really Corplay signature. He was a ceramist specialized in the imitation of Bernard Palissy ceramics, but as Beatrice said, he did also a lot of restoration and is famous for adding new pieces to missing parts. It seems that this job helped him to have an access to original pieces and it made his copyist work easier. At this time, during the 19th century, the aim of the treatments was to restore the enamels to their original appearance, but they often caused uh, damage very important by destroying the integrity of the object. Surface cleaning, corrosion removal, consolidation of protection of glass, repair of breaks, filling of glass losses and in painting and varnishing are all recorded in the historic literature. They have been sources of deterioration rather than preventive or improving uh, treatments. And just another example of very old restoration, and it's also to illustrate the, uh, this, new this new source of information that is the, the internet. Uh, you see, this, is, this uh, a cup, the Salbon cup, was found in this pot. It's a Roman Champlevé uh, enamel. And it's, it was found during the 19th century already with this patch here. And so it's a very old restoration. And I found this, in, this information on the web. I didn't find it in a library. Just to tell you that in 2001, when I did my research, I just found one reference on the net uh, talking about conservation of enamels. And today you, find, you can find a lot of things. And this is another one, which is quite interesting for, for people who want to do research. You can find on Google Books uh, all the, I will say it in French, I'm sorry, Bulletin de la Société Archéologique et Historique du Limousin, which are um, uh, volumes where historians were publishing papers on the history, the technology of enamels, and they're very interesting, but they're not very easy to find. So from your, your lab, you can just go and go through the book and read it. It's very useful. So uh, today we can say that treatments tend to be less interventive than before. And they tend also to respect the material and aesthetic and historical integrity of the objects. Today, conservators appreciate that glass and metal conservation treatments can't be systematically applied to enamels, but they have to be adapted. And this is because of the specificity of enamels that are composite objects. So I won't go further for that, but it's clear that we still have several topics to solve, and this, these meetings are the, the proof for that. And this is the last one. Uh, the question is how to improve the bibliography. Well, there is a way to update the references, and this is what I did um, this year. Uh, some authors send me their um, papers, and that's very useful also because not so many do that. There is uh, someone from the metal group, I don't know him personally, Goran Bodija, I don't know if someone from the metal group is here, but he sent his 
just sending me references. He's from Croatia, so he sends me references of Russian translated in English, so he's a very interesting source, but not too many people do that. So please, if you find something, send it to me. It will be in the next, um, net, next edition. To complete uh, the references, so it's interesting in foreign languages, like Russian, Chinese, Arab, I, don't, I can't read them. So if someone can, it's, it could be also useful. It's also interesting to complete this work uh, with an inf investigation in the field work, to compare the written sources with objects. That's what Beatrice did today. And it's also interesting to do some research on oral history. And here you see an interview of Jean-Michel André in Paris. And he's the grandson of the of the person who was uh, in charge of the house, André, who was an important house who restored. They were making, but also restoring uh, enamels, other decorative art objects during the 19th century. And you also have, um, it's important to have exchanges with craftsmen. And here you can see André Uvilazis. She's this enameler, Catalan enameler I talked about at the beginning. And he has an incredible collection of materials. Uh, it's like a library of uh, all types of materials and old ones from the beginning of the 20th or 19th century that could be very useful for our, um, for our research or our studies. So these, all these things could improve the historical research. To finish, just I would like to thank all these people, institutions that helped me, but also people, and one is in the room, so thank you. Thank you for your attention. It's really a never-ending story, and I already seen three papers I didn't know, so I'm happy in the references in the abstract. So it's already in the for the next edition. So, but please for, remember that it's useful to to send me things. Thank you. And where can we get this? Uh, I have well on the net. It will be on the net, but I have here ten copies. Uh, it's that I will. You say, how do you say, sell yes. for $15. And after, if you want, if someone if you want one, you just need to contact me in Barcelona. I think there is my email, and, and I will send it to you after. If you want this form, this, this thing, this object. <laughs> Thank you. I'd love to buy one from you. <laughs> Thank Agnes again. <laughs>